All right, excellent. Good to see everyone. Good morning. Good morning, Jay. Good morning, Dad. Good morning, Dr. Todd Scott. Good morning, Mike Johnson. All kinds of people. If you um, if you don't normally use the chat function, uh, this would be a good time to to bring that up if you have the ability. Um, we are we will use that uh, for your questions. Should you have any? Uh, throughout the course of our uh, pre presentations this morning. Uh, we have several presenters, as we always do here for our coffee break update. Uh, if you have any questions, use that chat function and direct those questions to Shannon Shannon. Uh, Shannon Shannon is, of course, the owner of Saddle Rock Reverse Mortgage and a board member with the Greater High Desert Chamber of Commerce Board of Directors. Uh, so direct your questions to Shannon, as, and as time allows, we will get those questions uh, over to our presenters. Um, you'll notice uh, behind me, I don't have my, my usual Hesperia golf course and blue sky and mountains background. Uh, it didn't feel right. I, I, I think I did this a couple months ago too. It didn't feel quite right with the uh, somewhat gloomy weather outside. It's a, it's a little chilly still. It was raining as I was driving here to work this morning, uh, but, but never fear. It's going to uh, warm up a little bit. It looks like it's going to be in the the low 80s by the end of the weekend and into early next week, which is still a little chilly for my taste. But um, Marshall, don't, don't you mean that's a little too warm for your taste? Uh, no, no, I do not. Uh, the closer we get to triple digits, uh, the better, the happier I am. So I'm one of those, I'm one of those weirdos who likes uh, when it says 101, I'm in my happy place. So, all right, so we're going to uh, get started. That was actually our double O CEO, uh, President and CEO of the Greater High Desert Chamber of Commerce, Mr. Mark Crefield, uh, chiming in there. So, hey, Mark, why don't you take it away and update us on the Chamber of Commerce? Uh, thank you, Marshall. It's an honor. Hey, welcome everybody this morning. Great to see everybody. Go ahead and give my uh, update this morning. The first thing uh, coming up next uh, Tuesday, we have our uh, What's Brewing in Chamber Marketing. Can you advance the slide, Shannon? There we go. Uh, what's brewing in chamber marketing? This is an opportunity for you to learn how to utilize your chamber account to its uh, fullest. Again, that's March 30th at 9 a.m. on Zoom. You can register at our website, uh, ghdcc.com. Uh, next up, uh, coming up on April 7th, we have our State of Education, uh, where we'll have a guest speaker, Ted Alejandre, who's the San Bernardino County Superintendent of Schools, and also will be awarding all of our scholarships to uh, area students. Um, again, you'll have to register in advance and the first registration will be on today's uh, last email and then we'll do a few more uh, registration opportunities next week and the following week. So again, that's Wednesday, April 7th. Next up, our next coffee break update will then be two weeks from today. Uh, we already do have one sponsor, but we have a few sponsorships remaining. So if you are interested in sponsoring uh, our next coffee break update, it is two weeks from today on Friday, April 9th at 9 a.m. And then also coming up in April, we're gonna have our next virtual mixer. If you missed our virtual mixer last week, it was a wonderful, fun event. So we're looking forward to seeing even more people at our virtual mixer coming up on April 20th at 5 p.m. And thank you to our sponsor, Family Assistance Program. So you'll have the opportunity to sign up for that in the next week or so. But again, you don't wanna miss out on our virtual mixer. We really, really had a great time. And last but not least, we are happy to announce our first in-person outdoor event with the Greater High Desert Chamber of Commerce will be the inaugural High Desert Regional Open Golf Tournament. Presenting sponsor, Desert Valley Hospital, Desert Valley Medical Group. This will be on Friday, June 25th at Spring Valley Lake Country Club with a 9 a.m. shotgun start. Uh, so if you want more information about that and what opportunities there are for you to play, uh, and even if you're not a golfer, there are other sponsorships that uh, might be attractive to you, but go ahead and put your information in the chat and I will get that information out to you. So again, back to you, Marshall. Thank you very much for everybody. Uh, happy Friday, everybody. And we will see you all real soon. Absolutely. I actually, Mark, I actually got goosebumps as you were announcing that just now. That is awesome to hear our first in-person Greater High Desert Chamber of Commerce event. We've done a lot over the last, uh, well, just about a year since we started this coffee break update. I think it was in uh, April or possibly May of last year. Uh, and just as always, as has become a staple of our um, everyday
every other week presentation to you. We have updates from our, our local cities. Uh, so we're going to start this week uh, with an update on the city of Atalanto. And here to talk to us about the city of Atalanto is city manager, Jesse Flores. Good morning, Jesse. Good morning, Marshall. Um, can you hear me? We can. Fantastic. Um, yeah, I, thank you very much uh, for the opportunity to provide you with an update. Unfortunately, the mayor could not be here this morning. We're both traveling, so bear with us. Uh, we're not on vacation. Uh, the city of Adelanto is definitely open for business. And when we're traveling, we're, we're meeting with uh, decision makers to, to uh, attract business into our city and or uh, um, have them expand um, their operations or relocate their operations into our city. We're a very aggressive city. And I mean that in a positive way, uh, aggressive in the sense that um, uh, we are moving extremely fast to um, attract business and development into our city. And I think, uh, I believe under Mayor Reyes' leadership, uh, we've been uh, uh, doing a great job accomplishing uh, just that. Uh, we did things a little bit different in our city. We focused on job creation and, um, and, and mainly industrial type of uh, well-paying jobs. And um, you know we're a very unique city uh, in the sense that um, we have two industrial parks and we're a city that's about 55 square miles and about 15% of it has been built out. So that means uh, for, for the development community that uh, we have plenty of land uh, to, to develop in. And so, uh, again, Mayor Reyes and uh, members of our council uh, focused on um, creating jobs, well-paying jobs, and we attracted uh, major companies into our city. And of course, as you already know, uh, the cannabis industry is one of our major pillars, and uh, uh, we, we truly appreciate uh, that industry that uh, we've uh, we've created in our in our backyard. Um, it's a it's a very well-paid uh, industry, and um, it's creating a tremendous amount of, of, of well-paying jobs. And uh, with uh, those jobs, it's obviously creating a demand for housing. But some of the uh, non-cannabis, non-cannabis related activity or, or, or industries that we're attracting uh, on, a, on a weekly basis into our city um, uh, are companies like uh, Clark Pacific. Clark Pacific, one of Southern California's largest concrete manufacturers uh, has, um, uh, is expanded into our city on 118 acres. So they shut down their Irwindale operations and uh, relocated into our city. And they're in the process of shutting down their Fontana plant and um, moving that facility up into our, our city as well. So, so we're excited about that because it's obviously creating a tremendous amount of jobs and that's something that's very, very much needed uh, in today's economy. Uh, unfortunately, due to this pandemic, it's really, really hurt our, our country pretty bad. But uh, the city of Adelanto hasn't stopped. COVID or no COVID, uh, we've been open for business and applications continue to come into our city. Uh, so uh, in addition to Clark Pacific, we attracted uh, um, also General Atomics. That uh, that company there builds the uh, uh, engines for the Predator drone and the Predator drone is an unmanned uh, air vehicle that provides air support to our men and women in combat. So we're excited to have them also, you know, in our city. Um, two of the uh, other most recent companies that we've attracted into our city, well-paying companies, uh, are, are Copart. Copart is one of the world's largest auto online dealer in the world. Um, and so they purchased about 100 acres in our city as well. And uh, they're there now and uh, turning dirt and uh, relocating a lot of their vehicles for auction. And we're talking, you know, high-end vehicles to low-end vehicles from Lamborghinis, Ferraris, Rolls Royces, all the way down to Toyotas. Uh, so, so it's uh, pretty exciting to have them in our backyard as well. And the most recent company that uh, we attracted into our city uh, was the Boring Company. Um, uh, Chairman uh, Kurt Hagman, um, San Marino County uh, Board of Supervisors played a major role and we're very grateful for uh, his leadership and his support to, to assist the city of Adelanto to, to bring in these types of industries. The Boring Company is, as some of you might know, is, is a division from Elon Musk, Tesla division and uh, SpaceX. Um, you know, Elon is, is quickly leaving the state of California because it's so bureaucratic. And uh, we, we convinced them that, uh, hey, there's still a city left in, in the entire state of California. It's called Adelanto. Why don't you give us a, give us a shot? And uh, before you meet, move the boring company to some foreign country, give us an opportunity. So, you know, we met with him last year in December 
And within 90 days, he was already relocating his entire uh, boring company uh, into our city uh, directly across the street from uh, Adelanto Baseball Stadium. So, so we're really excited to have Elon Musk, a, a major brand in our backyard. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's truly an honor and a privilege to, to have uh, a, a big brand like that in our city. Mayor Reyes uh, played a major role in uh, bringing that company into our city. So under Mayor Reyes's leadership, we're really excited to, to see that for the first time in many years, in many years uh, that we are truly uh, a business friendly city. Uh, on that note, let me just kind of divert a little bit over to the, the land use department that we have. Um, our land use department is, is, is a second to none. Um, I've had to go, I've, I've had to go through about three or four different types of um, uh, consultants uh, to get uh, land the right one, land the right consulting firm. And so what we did uh, under Mayor Reyes's leadership, we outsourced the entire land use department uh, to the private sector. So, so what that means is the, the land use department is comprised of a building and safety planning and engineering and uh, very important uh, agency that uh, uh, is, is so vital to, to the success of any sustainable city, right? That's where you come in, uh, uh, in uh, putting your application for say, a track uh, home development or some kind of uh, retail or commercial development or industrial uh, park development. And uh, it's such a vital and important department. That's where you know, you, you either sit on the application for years or, or you can streamline the process and, and have this business breaking ground within 90 days, right? And so that's what we've done. Uh, businesses are coming into our city because we're able to break ground within 90 days once they get through the planning commission. So we're excited about that. We created a business to business environment. The entire land use department works seven days a week. That's right seven days a week, not Monday through Thursday or Monday through Friday, and they clock in at eight o'clock in the morning and clock out at nine and you don't see these, these individuals till next week. These individuals work around the clock, which is why we're, we're attracting so much industry and creating so many jobs. And with that said, you know, with all these jobs that we're creating, we are uh, now creating a demand for housing. And like our neighboring cities, you know, that grew up through good times and bad times, you know, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, We've attracted um, uh, big developers, uh, developers, uh, large scale developers, uh, such as DR Horton, uh, Frontier Communities, K Havinian Homes, uh, just to name a few. These are major developers that are building homes. Just within the last couple of years, we've built uh, just a little over 500 single family homes with uh, just these three developers. And so we're excited about that. And that, that is creating a demand for now retail and commercial development, mainly commercial development along Highway 395. And uh, for your listeners uh, or your members that are out there that are looking for to expand or are or, or, or considering to move into our city, uh, we have an amazing, amazing city with uh, tremendous assets. And uh, one of those assets happens to be Highway 395. Highway 395 comes all the way in uh, or comes all the way from the Canadian border, Canadian border into Bishop, Mammoth, and all that traffic, all of that traffic are just dollar signs, point of sales tax, and they, they travel right through our city, right? And uh, we have not been able to capture those point of sales tax, but uh, under, again, Mayor Reyes' leadership in this new administration, we are now uh, 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 moving in that direction uh, to capture um, all that um, all that revenue that's coming in along 395, with over 30,000 vehicles uh, traveling through our city on a daily basis, um, it's now creating a demand for for the uh, quick service restaurants and uh, other types of commercial development. We have two major brand hotels that have submitted their uh, their plans into our land use department. Uh, one of them happens to be uh, Best Western Plus, and the other is uh, the Holiday Inn. Um, so that uh, uh, is, is, is underway and um, the, uh, the stadium is definitely the baseball stadium. The Adelanto baseball stadium is definitely going to benefit from that. Uh, the stadium, speaking of the stadium, you know, that was a, 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 an event center that uh, was very much underutilized for many, many years. Uh, and it's such an amazing asset. Speaking of assets, uh, that uh, we are now promoting uh, pre-COVID. We were promoting a tremendous amount of, of, of um, family fun events and concerts. Uh, 
Uh, we had uh, big names like, uh, you know, rap artists like Too Short, um, Bone Thugs and Harmony, uh, DJ Quick, uh, Baby Bash, and and some of you that are on this call, you, you guys know what I'm talking about. This, this is good old, old, old 80 music uh, from the days. And so we've had uh, foot traffic there uh, in the in the numbers of somewhere in the range of five to 6,000 uh, in, in attendance at our stadium, something that the stadium has never seen. And and so that uh, that's obviously the hotels are going to benefit from that. And then we have uh, we brought back the three day uh, motocross Grand Prix uh, that kind of went away for several years. We brought that back. And so um, um, anyhow, uh, a lot, a lot, a lot of amazing things happening in our city. And I, I don't want to take up the entire time here. Um, reach out to Mark uh, or, or Marshall. Um, I, I can sit here and brag about our city all day long, but uh, I, I think you guys know that we're open for business. And um, um, uh, by the way, we have a quick service restaurant that is accepting proposals right now. It's the Arco Gas Station, uh, Arco Gas Station slash Travel Center. And um, um, they're accepting proposals for a quick service restaurant. It's got a drive through. So, so please get a hold of Mark. They can get a hold of the city of Adelanto and uh, we'll uh, connect you with the uh, developer. Anyways, uh, I'll let you all go. I, I hope that I covered uh, 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 what you wanted to hear and uh, thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you very much, Jesse. We appreciate it. It's it's always good to hear good news. Um, we we always, absolutely always appreciate it. We, Lord knows we always need the good news. So thank you so much for that. Shannon, do we have any uh, questions for um, the city manager? We do not. All right. Well, thank you very much, Jesse, and have yourself a great weekend. As, as Jesse was talking, I was uh, watching our participants, our gallery view here of all the different people, and uh, I saw one particular person clapping as uh, Jesse was talking about those acts from the 80s and early 90s, and I, it seemed like the right time to bring that person up, uh, who happens to be one of our sponsors this week for this week's Coffee Break Update uh, with Elementum Services, our good friend Oscar Garcia. Oscar, good morning. It's good to see you. You got to unmute. There you go. Good morning, everybody. Can you guys hear me now? Yes, we can. Good morning, Oscar. What's up, everybody? Great, great high desert community. Uh, Oscar here with Elementum Services, your local water damage service company. But you know what else we do? We take care of mold. Water damage, if not taken care of properly, will create mold damage. And as a lot of you may know, insurance carriers look at mold as long-term damage. So allow Elementum Services to assist you guys. Give us a call at 1-800-319-9022. We'll come out, give you guys a free verbal assessment. The meeting will come out, we'll assess all the damages, explain to you what's going on, and if needed, we'll help you in the insurance claim process. Another thing I wanna share with everybody here today is that I recently expanded our service into Las Vegas, Nevada, as of the 1st of February, and we're very excited here at Elementum uh, to keep the quality of work uh, going. So by all means, if anybody has friends or family that are going through some type of situation in regards to water damage, fire, or mold, give us a call. As you may know, I love to talk. For what it is, uh, I appreciate all of you guys and I'm hoping to see everybody pretty soon so I can kind of chest bump or bro or hug or whatever it is because I do miss everybody. I'm more of a people person being in front of everybody. But again, regardless of all that, keep us in mind. We're here to help you guys. Can't go wrong with free verbal assessments. Let Elemental Services assist you guys and your families. Everybody be safe. Thank you so much, guys. Well, thank you, Oscar. It's good to see you as well. Thank you for sponsoring this week's Coffee Break Update and joining us. Uh, if you are interested in sponsoring a Coffee Break Update, just as Mark talked about a little while ago, uh, shout out to Mark. Um, shoot him an email, call the Chamber office, and he will tell you how easy it is to be a sponsor of Coffee Break Update. Next up, we have another municipal update for you. We will welcome from the city of Hesperia, Mayor Cameron Gregg. Good morning, Mayor Gregg. Good morning, everyone. I hope everyone has had a good week so far. And, and as we prepare to the weekend, I hope your weekend is good as well. 
Um, first of all, I'd like to um, have everybody, if you can, keep our Hesperia deputy, Dustin Winston, um, who was shot and is in critical condition in your prayers. And um, additionally, the city of Hesperia, we have decided to take up uh, a fund to try to take uh, in do donations that will help support Dustin and his family during this very tragic and trying times. Um, it's a very tragic event, and I know that the community has been very supportive, and the, the amount of outpour that has come in is, is amazing. It really shows what our community is about. So I would like to thank everybody that has helped out as much as they can. Kind of on that same note, um, with our Hesperia station, we would like to congratulate Captain Brownie on his retirement. And as we welcome in our new uh, police captain, we expect great things and we will definitely be coordinating very heavily with ensuring that our community remains safe as possible. On to the other city business that we have. Uh, I'd like to remind the public that we are open uh, at a 25% maximum capacity to allow for social distancing for our council meetings. Our city remains open as it has throughout this entire uh, COVID. So thank you to Niels and the great leadership over at the city of Asperia who has been able to mitigate those factors and allow uh, business to continue. Uh, tire Amnesty Day is scheduled for Saturday, April 10th. So if you have any tires, uh, passenger and light trucks, they may be dropped off free of charge from 7.30 to noon. And our military service banner program continues to be a very effective way to honor uh, active duty members of the armed forces for our community. So if you haven't already, get those names in so we can display our heroes um, through our, throughout our city. We have Community Cleanup Day that's back in action April 24th. It's a great way to serve the community while enjoying the fresh air. Um, I know it's a little chilly now and with the rain, it'll just set up for a good event come uh, April. Any additional information for programs or anything else um, as far as uh, donations to the for Dustin there, I'll provide the email. Um, we're going to reach out to Tammy uh, Peleas. I'll, like I said, is I'll provide the email and the the chat box there if anybody is able to or would like to contribute in that manner. Other than that, I hope everyone has a great rest of the day, a great weekend, and a great 2021. Excellent. Thank you so much, Mayor Greg. Uh, good to hear that uh, happenings in the city of Hesperia um, on the on the positive end anyway. Uh, and we certainly look forward to meeting the new uh, sheriff station captain uh, when we get that opportunity. I know I know Mark was uh, talking about uh, potentially having um, the new captain on, so hopefully we can arrange that and all get to say hello. Shannon, do we have any questions for Mayor Greg? Yeah, we have one. Um, what was the date on Tire Amnesty Day again? Right. The Tire Amnesty Day is going to be April 10th. Okay, thank you. That was the only question. Excellent. All right, thank you, Mayor Greg, and thank you for um, fielding that question for us, Shannon. If you uh, have questions for any of our other presenters throughout the rest of our presentation this morning, uh, direct them to Shannon in the chat box, and we will get them to, them to our presenters as time allows. We want to introduce another one of our sponsors this week for this this coffee break update. Uh, joining us from Card Connect is Terry Blaylock. Good morning, Terry. Good morning, everyone. I'm Terry Blaylock. I am a senior business advisor with Card Connect, which is a first data company. Uh, first data company is um, owned by Fiserv. So I have a question today. Um, how many folks out there currently use um, card readers? Uh, or accept credit cards for payments. Okay. How many of you are aware of what your merchant category code is? Now, regardless of who you're working with, whoever is processing your payments right now, you need to check with your rep and make sure your merchant category code is being applied. And this is very important because if you are a business, 
this is something that you want to be uh, taken advantage of. This applies to your interchange rates that you pay for every single payment. So with the payment solutions, uh, you need to ensure that you are getting the proper rate. And the first way to check that out is to look at your card statement that you get from your payment solutions company and look for your interchange rates and also your merchant category code. And if you can't find it on your statement, just check with your rep. And that makes sure that you are not paying more than you should every time you process a payment. And one of the things that we do at Card Connect is ensure that that uh, merchant category code um, is applied to every single payment, whether it's payment through a debit card, a credit card, a business credit card, uh, whatever payment processing um, you're currently handling. So the other thing that I wanted to let you know about is uh, there is a Durban law uh, that a lot of the card uh, companies follow. And what we recently um, have been able to do according to the Durban law is we can now offer a cash discount program. So if you need assistance with that, please let me know. My email address is tblaylock at cardconnectpartners.com. Excellent. Thank you so much for that, Terry. And thank you to Card Connect for sponsoring this week's Coffee Break Update. We want to introduce to you now the public information officer from the city of Victorville to give us an update on the city of Victorville, Sue Jones. Good morning, Sue. Good morning, Marshall. Good morning, everyone. And thank you so much for this opportunity to give an update from the city of Victorville. Um, we're, despite COVID, we're actually seeing a lot of um, positive new business development and construction in our city. And I thought it might be uh, interesting to share some of the stats. Uh, commercial permits are up 75% um, from 2019. Um, so we're seeing a lot of development. Um, we're very happy to announce that an Amazon last mile delivery station will move into our old Walmart building on Bear Valley Road. And uh, this new business is expected to bring 150 new jobs to our community, which is uh, such a wonderful uh, infusion of new jobs for us. Um, also, it's exciting to see yet another vacant retail space occupied in Victorville. And this is part of a really positive trend we're experiencing. Uh, for example, Car Exchange uh, recently moved into the old Target building on Palmdale Road. Just further down on Palmdale Road, Cardenas Markets moved into the old Ralphs. We saw IEHP move into the former Michaels, and there's many more examples, and I don't want to bore you with them, but these large businesses are moving into our retail centers and starting to infuse some uh, revival into those shopping centers, and having these anchor stores there helps draw uh, customers to benefit the smaller adjacent stores, and this is really positive uh, for our retail market. Um, I also thought that I would share an infrastructure update. We, we often get a lot of questions about what roads we're going to repair um, and plan to fix in our city. And um, I'm happy to report that we get a lot of questions about this one section of Bear Valley Road um, between Amethyst and US 395. That is on our capital improvement plan for this year and we plan to reconstruct approximately two miles uh, from Amethyst Road to US 395, as I said, on Bear Valley Road. Um, and uh, this is about a $6 million project. We also plan to fix that area um, uh, at Industrial Boulevard and Silica. We're gonna reconstruct the pavement and replace the storm drain there. That's about a 0.9 mile uh, length um, and it will cost $4 million. We're advertising for that project now. Uh, we also have a large uh, neighborhood focused uh, crack seal and slurry seal in the Liberty Village area. And that'll be about 16 miles of roadway uh, for a cost of about 1.5 million. And we are advertising for that project as well. And later in the year, uh, we do plan to widen Bear Valley Road at near the bridge there um, and add an extra turn lane from Bear Valley Road onto Ridgecrest, um, which we hope 
is uh, will alleviate the congestion that tends to uh, back up there. And as a follow up to my update from last coffee update, I wanted to let you know that the city council did approve the construction contract award for the Green Tree Extension. Uh, that contract was awarded to Skanska, Skanska USA um, and work will probably begin at the end of May or early June. And uh, just need to say, I know you probably heard about the tragic accident that happened in that area yesterday. And um, our hearts are definitely, and our minds are certainly with the families that were affected in that tragic accident yesterday. Um, a quick COVID update. Um, we're really excited to see our numbers moving in the right direction. It looks like we're getting even closer to the orange tier on the state's blueprint for uh, reopening businesses. This is wonderful news. If the trends continue, it looks like we could enter the orange tier as early as April 7th in our area. And this would mean that some of the businesses that are already open, like movie theaters, restaurants, could have greater capacity uh, inside. And some of the other businesses, like indoor playgrounds, could also open. And um, we, I think bars are on that list as well. Also, uh, vaccine eligibility uh, will be expanded, according to uh, a recent state announcement. Uh, on April 1st, all adults age 50 and higher will be able to receive the vaccine. And on April 15th, all individuals age 16 and higher will be able to receive the vaccine. And if you uh, would like or know of anybody that would need door-to-door -door service to get that vaccine at either Hook Community Center in Victorville or Our Lady of the Desert in Apple Valley, please take advantage of VBTA's Vaccine Express, and you can make an appointment with them at 760-948-3030. And finally, I'm really happy to announce that we are reopening Victorville City Hall to the public on April 5th, and safety protocols will be in place to protect the community and our employees. As you know, we did have a large outbreak of COVID-19 among our employees uh, a few months ago. And so we were forced to temporarily close our city hall to public access, but our numbers have decreased. We haven't had recent positives. Uh, the positive cases in our community are down and we're um, very happy to be able to finally reopen city hall. Access will be limited. Um, to our customer service entrance. You could come in and walk in to see our customer service counters and get assistance there. But if you would like appointments with other departments like planning, engineering, business license, et cetera, we do require that you make an appointment in advance and appointments can be scheduled um, at bv.city slash appointment or by calling our main number 955-5000. And I will put that in the chat for everyone. And finally, I do wanna make sure everyone understands that when you come to City Hall, we will ask you to complete a health screening and wear a face covering. And with that, Marshall, I'm gonna turn it back to you. Excellent. Thank you so much for all of that, Sue. Um, certainly talking about businesses opening is not boring. However, I appreciate that we did not mention Chick-fil-A because I am also hungry. Uh, so thank you for sparing that. Although I mentioned it myself, so I just really am my own worst enemy. Uh, Shannon, do we have any uh, questions for Sue and the city of Victorville? We do. So the first one, um, those construction workers, they were part of the Green Tree Extension, that, that, that project that were, at, that were um, um, killed in, and in the accident. Is that they were wanting clarification on that. So the accident um, that occurred yesterday occurred um, at the same location where the Green Tree Extension will be built, um, which is um, at the intersection of Green Tree Boulevard and Hesperia Road. Um, however, um, the work that was being done there and actually very near completion was a precursor project to the Green Tree Extension. Um, there is a was a sewer line main that was um, located right in the area where the new road will be built. 
and that sewer line main needed to be relocated. And so those workers were part of that project that was relocating that sewer line main. All right, okay. So our, it's hearts, our, our, our hearts are definitely with those families. So the next question was, I'm sure you get this a lot, is can you ask Sue what is happening with the vacant seat on city council? Oh, sure. So um, this has been discussed by the city council twice, um, once at a regular meeting and once most recently uh, a few days ago at a special meeting. And um, right now the council is deadlocked at a 2-2 vote. So when a vacant seat comes on the council, uh, the council can vote to either hold a special election and leave it to the voters, or they can um, go to an appointment. And um, there has been, you know, two, two council members have discussed whether they should go back to the results from the recent election in November and interview some of the candidates from that and appoint, or there's two council members deadlocked <laughs> or on the other side who are wanting a special election. And because no majority was reached uh, right now, then there is no, that's a failed motion. There's no movement there. And so if that does not change, then our council will remain a former member council until the next general election, which is in 2022, November. All right, okay. And let's see the one less, this is more of a comment than anything, a, a special election would cost how much? Well, um, to determine that cost, um, we reached out to the um, registrar voters and we were given an estimate based on a recent special election that was held by Rialto. And that election, I believe was um, just over a year ago. And the estimate from Rialto's re uh, election was uh, $700,000 and the city incurred that cost alone because when you do a special election, oftentimes you are um, the only election occurring. And so you incur all the cost. Um, however, there was some additional estimate from the registrar voters because the city of Victorville voter base is larger than the voter base in Rialto. Um, so the recent estimate was um, over 800,000. I'm sorry, I think the actual estimate was close to 850,000. So that is a number again, that is an estimate, um, but it was used to kind of look at cost and, and you kind of have to go on estimates. So that, that's what we're dealing with right now. All right, okay. Thank you, Sue, there's no further questions. Okay. Well, cool. thank you, Sue. Uh, have a great weekend. Thank you so much for all of that information. We appreciate it. We want to introduce to you another one of our sponsors for this week's Coffee Break Update. We have joining us from Coldwell Banker Commercial, Chris Lamoureau. Good morning, Chris. Good morning. Today, I'm excited to talk about the Real Estate Symposium, the Coldwell Banker Commercial High Desert Review and Forecast. Um, it's actually in two parts this year, coming to you virtually again via Zoom and Facebook Live. Uh, yesterday uh, was the first part, and we had Dr. Thornburg, who's an economist, who gave a great in-depth um, review of 2020 and his forecast for 2021. If you missed that, uh, you can go on our uh, CBC Real Estate uh, Facebook and watch it. And also the city managers gave great updates yesterday as well. So the part two is next Thursday, April 1st, 10 a.m. to noon. You can go to cbcsymposium.com to register for free. Brightline West, uh, the high speed rail will be discussing um, you know, the, the latest and greatest on their front, as well as the commercial agents. Jason um, will be doing a commercial real estate up, update in general. Uh, Bob Basin will be talking about industrial. Jared Shindell will be talking about multifamily and I will be talking about housing. Uh, so residential housing in our neck of the woods. Uh, so a lot of great information. We invite you guys to attend. So register cbcsymposium.com and join us April 1st or check out uh, yesterday's um, event on Facebook, CBC Real Estate. So thank you. Excellent. Thank you so much for that, Chris. And thank you to Coldwell Banker Commercial for 
being one of our sponsors for this week's coffee break update. I don't oh, know how often. If ahead, I may, sorry, sure. I forgot. Um, uh, U.S. Congressman uh, Jay Ornolty will be speaking, as well as uh, um, State Assemblyman uh, Smitty will be speaking at the symposium next week as well. So, excellent. Thank you so much for that. Uh, I don't know how often any of you uh, look through our, our gallery view uh, of all of our participants, but I was just enamored watching Pat Orr uh, shop at Costco. Uh, so it looks like he's jumped off the call, but I hope that's a successful shopping trip. And also now effectively our first Greater High Desert Chamber of Commerce event inside of Costco. So you're welcome and thank you for joining us. All right, next up, we have another first for you. We have, uh, we have uh, a new face, not really a new face, but a new face related to the Town of Apple Valley report. So we have joining us this week to update us on things in the Town of Apple Valley, the President and CEO of Lewis Center for Educational Research, our friend Lisa Lamb. Good morning, Lisa. Good morning. I am totally honored to be here on the town on behalf of the town of Apple Valley. Doug Robertson was unavailable to give the update today. So I am looking forward to sharing some updates with all of you for Apple Valley. So the first big one uh, that we wanted to talk about today was the Citizens Budget Advisory Committee. I am a part of that committee, so it felt fitting for me to be able to talk about it. So the um, CBAC committee was formed to get broad public engagement in um, the budgeting process and potential budget deficits. And so, so far this committee has held two public meetings. Uh, in the, during those meetings, mostly it has been to, for the staff to set the stage with historical and current budget um, parameters and cycles. The committee has brainstormed a number of ideas for potential cost cutting, and the staff has organized those in terms of near and long-term categories and what are some costs associated with that. At the next meeting, we're going to be looking um, at taking a deeper dive into things like um, development fees that the town assesses, parks and rec programming and funding. We'll be looking at upcoming elections at, as an attempt for a more police focused sales tax initiative since the general sales tax, tax initiative did not pass last time. Um, and finally, we'll be looking at the potential impacts for uh, the police contract and the um, implications of that. And then after that, we as a committee will be looking at prioritizing the options for the council to make the final decisions regarding the budget. So it has been an honor to be part of this process. They are all public meetings. And so we hope that um, citizens will, will join in on that stakeholder engagement process. The next thing that I am very excited to talk to everybody about is, and I think that it may be a good representat representative to speak to is the town of Apple Valley and NASA. And so there has been a longstanding partnership between NASA and the Lewis Center and we run the Goldstone to Apple Valley radio telescope out at Goldstone for NASA. And we have an educational project there that we're in 44 states, 14 countries, four US territories, uh, but it's all housed right here in Apple Valley. And so there have just in recent years been a number of opportunities for us to elevate the town. Uh, one thing that we did when the schools were closed to only distance learning, the town and the Lewis Center partnered together to do a 10 week series of out of this world Wednesdays through the parks and rec department. And so the we provided many hands on uh, STEM activities ranging from every Thing from the Artemis mission to Mars to all of our Gavert missions that we do with NASA. We did some rocketry, some robotics. That was a really big success and it laid a lot of groundwork for the Mars 2020. So students all across our town, all throughout the district um, at the Academy for Academic Excellence and even in town programs, really geared up for Mars 2020 and Perseverance is landing. It was a, a very exciting thing for us. Uh, we were really excited to see that the in the premier um, coverage, national coverage of that event, right after the mission was such a great success, the new NASA administrator chose to select a question submitted from an Apple Valley student. His name is uh, Landon Applegate, and so he was able to have his question about um, potential resources used from Mars for 
uh, future missions by the NASA administrator himself. And, and he was the only student who asked a question who identified where he was from. And so that was really fun because we started getting phone calls. I know both at the town and, and here, uh, we started getting calls from all over the country about like, we just saw your student from Apple Valley uh, you know, on national TV. And so that was really exciting. The town and the Lewis Center also participated in a national social media campaign called Paint the Town Red. So I don't know if you noticed that Town Hall was lit up red. Um, ours was too. And we were included with some others like the Chicago Skyline, LAX, uh, and some other uh, Empire State Building and the town of Apple Valley. So that was, that was great. And then uh, one last announcement that we just found out about yesterday, we've been kind of shouting from the rooftop, the Academy for Academic Excellences Air Force Junior ROTC was selected to be only one of the first 10 units to transition to Space Force Junior ROTC. We are the only high school in all of California, and there are only three in the entire Western United States. So it's a, it's a huge honor and just, I think, a great representation um, of what the high desert is doing as a region around technology, space, and innovation, you know, from the boring company in Atalanto to all of the work that we're doing across. So exciting stuff. So that's what I have. Oh, and then um, one more thing, a schools update. Uh, we are all in spring break right now, but we are returning all grades back to hybrid instruction and we'll continue to phase back in. And of course, our goal is that as we return after summer break, we're all back in session full time, all grades, all kids. Um, COVID has been, um, there have been many silver linings, but there have been many hardships too. And I just want everybody on the call to know that all of the superintendents across our entire region, we meet regularly, we're talking, we're sharing best practices because our goal is to get our kids back in person um, just as soon as possible. So that's all I have. Excellent. Thank you so much for that, Lisa. Uh, I, I don't know if anyone else has ever had a chance to, to check out that, that Goldstone facility. Uh, Ryan Orr and I, uh, of course, pre-pandemic got a chance to see it and it's it's amazing. So uh, that's I was just immediately thinking of that as you were speaking about it. Um, I, I did see one uh, question pop up in the chat window. Um, I don't know, Lisa, if you can answer this or not. I'm, I'm gonna assume that you can't, but I'll ask it anyways. Um, do you know um, if there's if there are any plans or talks about the walk run event for uh, at Brewster Park Park on July fourth? I don't. I'm sorry. Yeah, I didn't think so, but figure it out. Let me try to get that answer, and then I'll put it in the chat if I find out. Sure, sounds good. Thank you, Lisa. Shannon, do we have any other questions for Lisa that you know of? No, we do not. Excellent. All right. Thank you so much for that, Lisa. We have one more sponsor to introduce to you this morning. We have uh, joining us from Mary Kay, Andrea Tober. Good morning, Andrea. Andrea, you're on mute. We can't hear you, Andrea. Still muted. Can you hear me now? There we go. Yeah, God, I try and try and I couldn't get it to unmute. Thank you, whoever that was that did that for me. I appreciate it. Well, good morning, friends. I'm Andrea Tober with Mary Kay. First of all, thank you so much for the so many of you who have supported and continue to support my business. I appreciate you more than you know. I love working with local businesses, providing quality products and outstanding customer service. I want to offer you an opportunity to show your staff just how much their hard work and dedication means to the success of your business. Administrative Professionals Day is Wednesday, April 21st. Recognize the people that always make you look so good with a special pampering gift. Your office and clerical staff deserve something very special this year, a gift that won't wilt or is calorie ridden, yet is personal and practical. Consider the gift from Mary Kay for your hardworking professionals. The gift sets you choose will be direct shipped to your office or the individual home offices to arrive the week of April 19th and will include a personal note from you. So let's chat. Leave your information in the chat box to receive an email pampering gift flyer. My contact information is phone number 760-617-7010. Again, my name is Andrea Tober with Mary Kay. Thank you so much. 
Give your staff the gift of Mary Kay this Administrative Professionals Day, which is Wednesday, April 21st. Thank you. Excellent. And thank you, Andrea. Thank you for sponsoring this week's Coffee Break Update. One more time, if you are interested in sponsoring a future Coffee Break Update, contact Mark Crefield and he will tell you how to do that. All right, we have one last presentation for you this morning. I know we're getting a little close to our normal uh, time, but we, we, we reached out and we still wanted to make sure we got this got this in absolutely. Uh, so we want to introduce to you this morning um, a, a, new, a new face to the Coffee Break update, but certainly not a new face uh, to Victor Valley College. Uh, in fact, I understand he uh, just celebrated two years at Victor Valley College. So would you please help me welcome the Vice, Vice President of Instruction, Health Science, Public Safety and Industrial Technology, Dr. Todd Scott. Good morning. Thank you very much. Um, and uh, the health science, public safety and industrial technology should be removed from my um, title come Monday because I hired a Dean to do all that stuff. <laughs> uh, so um, thank you very much for having me. And um, on behalf of uh, Dr. Walden, um, thank you for uh, being a part of the community and, and welcoming uh, the staff and faculty at Victor Valley College. Um, into all the innovative things that are happening here. So I wanted to give an update on uh, May 10th, we are opening back up to the public, uh, meaning all those ugly orange barricades along Bear Valley will be removed and the stanchions and everything. Um, and we are going to welcome our staff back on May 10th. Uh, of course, with all the, the safety protocols in place. However, we're still waiting on um, guidance from the county in terms of uh, when we can actually bring all of our students back on campus. So as far as fall semester goes, where it's, as everyone knows, it's a very fluid um, situation. So we're, we're taking it day by day, but um, hope to get students, the majority of our students back on campus as soon as possible. Um, and uh, some updates, I don't know if you know or not, but uh, we are going to break ground probably fairly soon on a new conference center, football stadium, uh, and uh, hospitality center, uh, and, a, and a field and track. So we had field and track, and we'd really like to see like some Friday night lights up here in the, in the high desert, uh, big football uh, events on the Victor Valley College. So and in addition to that, though, we're also renovating a host of buildings on campus. So these activities really should supply the high desert with a lot of jobs, a lot of construction and uh, earth moving jobs uh, in the high desert. And we're looking forward to having people on people in the high desert involved with that. Some new programs for us um, that you may be interested in is a business business acceleration certificate. Um, students taking eight week courses, uh, getting that certificate in a year or a year and a half. Um, we're working on, you know, I was talking about the uh, renovations to buildings. We are in the initial planning stages of uh, opening up an academic innovation center, which will uh, host uh, entrepreneurial studies and uh, a maker space and a place where individuals can get together and make those business dreams and ideas come to life and move them forward. So we're really excited about that. Uh, vaccinations. Um, we should be uh, a vaccination site here shortly in the next couple of weeks, partnering with uh, our friends at Desert Valley Hospital. You know, we are a testing center right now. We're still going to be a testing center, but we are going to uh, also include a vaccination site. A um, couple things last that I wanna mention, uh, Jesse Flores mentioned about all the great things happening along Highway 395. Well, we own some land along Highway 395 and can't wait for that expansion there so we can expand our offerings and uh, spread our reach to be more available to the to the residents of the high desert. 
And then one last thing, Mayor Greg, I um, just closed on a house this week in Hesperia. So um, be looking forward to moving my family up there and being a, being a part of that community. So thank you everyone for, for your time and, um, and attention. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you for joining us uh, as a, a Hesperia resident myself. Let me say welcome to Hesperia. Uh, and Thank you. I'm glad, <laughs> glad to have you. Glad to have you joining our, our city. Uh, and of course, uh, ha happy to have you joining us anywhere here in the high desert. Um, we, we absolutely love it here. Um, Shannon, do we have any questions for Dr. Todd Scott? Not at this time. All righty. Well, you wrap things up nicely. Thank you so much, Dr. Todd Scott and Victor Valley College for joining us this week. As, as always, of course, thank you uh, to the city of Adelanto, city of Asperia, city of Victorville and town of Apple Valley uh, for your updates. We wanna say thank you to Elementum Services, to Card Connect, to Coldwell Banker Commercial and to Mary Kay Andrea Tober for sponsoring this week's Coffee Break Update. We will see you again for Coffee Break Update on April 9th at 9 a.m., of course, as always here on Zoom. And I believe Mark is going to give everybody the power to unmute yourselves, which is a dangerous power. But of course, we encourage you to say, good, have a good weekend or, well, say whatever you want. I'm going to say have a good weekend and we'll see you in two weeks. Have a great weekend, everybody. Have a great weekend. Good Enjoy care. the weather. Have a great week. Oh, baby Joy. Hi, baby Good Joy. Weekend. Good to see you all. Good weekend. <laughs> Thank you. Take care. Great program this morning. Thanks. Pretty good Mark. MC. I hope Pat's done with his shopping trip. Well, Somebody should check on him and make sure he's, he made it out of the store. He's, he's probably definitely, lying. Marshall's definitely hungry by now. <laughs> oh, yeah. I want a hot dog. All right. Take guys. care, everybody. See you later. Bye-bye.